very good afternoon to everyone and and this is Dr. Suresh. Uh, I'm just going to give you uh, an insight into this uh, Cambridge English uh, specifically about this key English test. So I know that every I mean most of you um, would have done the previous exams uh, like YLE, starters, movers and flyers and you may know the basic uh, structures about these exams and uh, like the four skills listening speaking and reading and writing so I'm just going to run you through how the process would be with this key English test like all the four skills and I'm just going to give you an overview <coughs> so just to begin with mm, okay yeah so we know that this English test this uh, Cambridge English test is all pertaining to this international level, not just pertaining to any particular country or particular region. It's about international uh, exams. So when it comes to listening, like it'll be like this. Some conversation will be going on. You have to listen very carefully. And uh, after understanding what the conversation is about, you have to answer to the questions that are asked. So this is how it would be like you'd be listening to the English of the uh, native speakers, probably British or American English. That is going to be a little challenging for you because the way how they are going to uh, speak or the way how they speak in the conversation would be the uh, original English. So since we are uh, used to Indian kind of English, it would be a bit tough for us to understand what they speak. That's the challenge. Now you forget like we'll give you more training on that you don't have to worry about it so once you understand them then you'll be able to pick up what will be the answer that with the first part in listening and when it comes to the second part you have this the first one is about like pictures you have to choose the picture you have to circle the picture as to which one they are talking about the second one is about listen and write you have to listen very carefully they'll be talking about like you can just find the context here. You'll hear a teacher talking to a group of students about summer jobs. That's the context. You should always you know, listen to the context first. Only then you'll understand the overall picture. So you have to listen and then you have to write down the gaps, fill in the gaps kind of option. And one thing you have to be very careful is like you have to be very careful about the spelling. And moreover, you're, you're required to write it in capital letter or uppercase, in other words. Because when you write in lowercase, you may have like uh, cursive writing or maybe you have a different style of writing. But the person is going to correct your paper. Maybe he may not understand whatever you just wrote. You might have written it perfectly, but then the, the handwriting might look strange or he won't be able to make it out. So that's why it is advised to write it in capital letter here. You just have to fill in the details, whatever is missing. But those details, you will be able to get only from their conversation. So you have to listen very carefully in order to grab those information and then put it in here. And that's about the second part. And this part would be about, like every part you will have a particular context. Like you will hear Robert talking to his friend Laura about a trip to Dublin. So that's the context. Two people will be talking about that. And then for every question, you have multiple choice answers. You just have to pick out the right answer based on the question. Like the first, the, the eleventh question would be who was, who has already decided to go with Robert? So that you will be able to understand through the conversation. Then you can just choose the right answer. So that's how the third part would be in the listening. And in the fourth part would be like you have to match it. They'll be talking about like this, like you will hear Simon talking to Maria about a party. Where will each person bring to the party? Like what will each person bring to the party? So, so in this part, you have like you will hear Simon talking to Maria about a party. What will each person bring to the party? So there will be conversations about Barbara, Simon, Anita, Peter, Michael, and as to who would bring what. Like you can find the food options on the right side, like bread, cake, cheese, chicken, fish, fruit, ice cream. So based on their conversation, you just have to find out which one, um, uh, who would bring what. So that you have to match it. For example, if Barbara is to bring fish, then you have to write E in the box. That's what you got to do with giving you a rough uh, version of it. 
Now, when it comes to this uh, reading and writing, you will have the first part like this. You have this first part li like the first one. For each question, choose the correct answer. You have a kind of a poster, like for sale, women's bicycle, like in bracket, you have small. You can just take a look at this picture. Now, you have three options, like A, B, C. You just have to choose which one would be appropriate for this particular poster. Now, this would be sometimes misleading, so that, that's where your reading skills or your reading capacity comes into existence. So that would come out of uh, practice or proper practice, proper understanding. So those kind of learnings will be given by us, um, like our collective team or Cambridge teachers or trainers, uh, you know, once you enroll, enroll for this particular uh, course. So you just have to choose the right one and that would be the first part and the second part would be like this the first like the listening you will have like audio uh, files like people will have conversations talking to each other and then you have to understand and then you have to answer but here with the reading it is no audio files nobody will talk or anything no uh, mp3 or whatever it is about you have this pictures, some pictures, passages, some questions. In the part two, you have for each question, choose the correct answer. On the left side, you have seven to 13. You have some questions. And you also have three people on the right side. Some descriptions about the three people. You just have to read, understand all the three passages. And then according to the question, you have to choose, for example, who writes both a magazine and a blog. You have to just, based on your understanding, you just have to choose a circle or tick mark. You can just do whatever you want to do. Make sure that it is highlighted. Okay? So it is always advised to put a circle. Now, for example, a Chrissy is the one who actually does the blog as well as the magazine. So that means you have to put a circle to C. So that's how this particular part will be. And the part three would be the regular, typical one, like you have already in your syllabus. Like you have a passage, followed by the passage, you have some multiple choice questions, MCQs in other words. You have a question, answer, question, answer, like that you have, like Demi had her first ballet lesson, you have three choices. You have to choose the first one, or depending upon whatever you have understood based on this uh, passage that, are, that is given on the left side. Now, when you approach this kind of listening, I mean reading uh, exercises, you should always be very careful about not missing the title. Look at the title, A Family of Dancers. That's the context. Once you read the context, then that will give you a little exposure into what this passage is going to be about. Then when you go ahead and read it, you'll be able to understand it very easily. Now, most of us, what we do, we are slow readers. Like by the time you read, it's all like time bounded. You have a specific time to complete these particular exercises. You know, if you take a lot of time, then the time would be over and then you won't be able to complete all the questions or answers, whatever you mean. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a lot of training on how to read, how to understand, how to answer. All those things will be taught in the training. So those knowledge and skills that we're going to give you will help you to do every activity or every exams perfectly perfect and you're going to be very good at that all right and in part four would be you have some missing words on the right side the missing words are given as a b c you just have to choose the right word now in this kind of context how to find out or how to choose the right word and those exposure will be given by us all right for example the first one 19th one but it was the uh, dash of chemistry that really that really interested him so what what would be the right word that can fit in here in the blank space is it class or is it subject is it course no what kind of words would be missing and how to identify that those things will be taught in the training program in this Cambridge uh, Key English Test training program. But here the word is subject, but it was the uh, subject of chemistry that really interested him. So likewise, it's not just, I just gave you a clip like directly into one particular sentence and then I started talking about it. But then that's not the right way to approach this particular uh, methods or this reading 
um, passage or exercise, all right, it's like you have to first start reading it from A to Z, and then you have to understand, and then if you don't understand what to do, and if you understand partly what to do, and how to pick up the answer. There are so many tricks or methods, proper methods, through which you can find out the right answers. So now these are the skills. Now what we understand that the reading skill is all about like a passage and then you read it, understand, and then you answer it. That's it. That's what we understand. But it's much more than that. For example, now through this skill or through this reading, you're going to develop your understanding skills your analyzation skills for example a lot of skills involved in this like understanding analyzing and then um, uh, taking a decision based on whatever is uh, whatever the problem is that's what the whole objective of this reading skills now for example <clears throat> there are even people like elderly people if they look at a person the person would not have even met the elderly person but he would be able to tell the characteristics of that person Oh, this guy is good, this guy is bad, he is capable of this, he is capable of that. And he doesn't look like a very skillful person. Likewise, almost they will be able to tell 80% of the characteristics of that new person by the elderly people. Okay? But where do you think that kind of understanding, where do you think that kind of a skill they would attain already? How do you think it happens? It is all based on the understanding skills. It's about the vast experience, a lot of exposure that makes them... Uh, you know, attain that particular skills. That's why they are able to tell the characteristics of that person. So likewise, a lot of skills are going to uh, go into this and to understand this. So it's going to be a life skills. You're going to apply that in your life. Like for example, if you're going to be in a trouble or you have some problem and you're in a particular situation where it is completely challenging, you don't know how to come out of it. But if you're very good at reading skills, then you will be able to analyze and come out with easily, without, with an easy solution from that particular problem. So those kind of skills will, you will learn only through these kind of passages, all right? So it's going to be with you throughout your life. That's why it is called a, a life skills. And the, that's like, this is the writing skill. Like you have, a, you have this email from a friend called John to Maria like you have the email a sample email and you have like blank spaces like missing words you just have to come up with the missing word and then you have to fill in the blanks and then you have to reply to uh, john so maria is writing uh, a letter to john you have this like letter whatever she has typed so you just have to come up with one word answer not more than one okay write one word for each gap so <clears throat> what kind of word we have to put in so that again needs a lot of skills now these skills are very important when it comes to writing for example I hope dash are well like can you just imagine what would be the word that we can put in there to fill in like I hope you are well because uh, Maria is addressing to John only one person not many or uh, she's not talking about anybody else. So obviously, that's an example given here. You are well. So likewise, in the second one, yesterday morning, we went to Dash Lovely Beach. So what would be the word that would uh, fit in here? We went to a lovely beach. We went to a lovely beach. Some of you might have even got the uh, word, the lovely beach. Okay, so like when you're talking about one, uh, anything first time you should always use the word um, a because you're talking in general but you're referring to the same thing for the second time you have to use the word the now here the lovely beach is not being introduced in this line so that's the first line they're talking about lovely beach okay so here we have to use the general article like the article a so that's a lot of things now we will teach you as to how you have to write accurately or perfectly when it comes to mail drafting or writing a letter things like that and this sorry that's the first part in writing and uh, this is the second part like you have like you want to go uh, uh, swimming on Saturday with your English friend Tony write an email to Tony in the mail and how you have to draft a mail or how you have to send a mail now there is a particular 
way, uh, like procedure. This is how you have to begin a mail. This is how you have to end a mail. This is how you have to carry the middle pages when you write an email. This is about the writing, the second part, where you have to draft an email to your English uh, friend. So you have to include certain points here, like ask Tony to go swimming with you on Saturday. And say where you want to go swimming and say how you will travel there. So these are some of the points that you can include in the email. That's like kind of a hints uh, with which you have to develop in order to draft that email to, in order to send it to your friend Tony. Okay, so that's about that. And again, some word restrictions are there. Like you can write 25 words or more. More, it doesn't mean like more like 50 or 100 or whatever. Like 25 maybe approximately 30 maximum 35 not more than that 35 is like the extremest end 30 is okay all the time so to that extent in an accurate manner in a very crispy manner you have to short you have to uh, like draft a short email in order to send it to your friend and that's how this part is about in uh, in writing you have three parts in writing this is the first the first one is about you already like you already have uh, an email, you just have to fill in the details. You know, you have to hear, draft an email here. And this one is about writing uh, a story about this picture. So based on this picture, look at these uh, instructions that are given. Look at the uh, three pictures. Write the story shown in the pictures. Write 35 words or more. 35 words or more means like you can just go for another five words or max to the max, you can go for another 10 words, not more than that. So you can see the first picture and the second picture and the third picture. So based on that, whatever comes to your mind, you have to start writing a story. And you should know how to write a story, how, do you, how you have to begin, how, how you have to yeah, run the story, and how you have to end the story. And everything will be taught and you will be able to write a, a small story based on picture with this part. And in this uh, key speaking test, you have like basic question in the part one, like, Good morning, good afternoon, can I have your mark sheet, like what is your name and where are you from? Some basic questions will be asked and um, you just have to answer, like some question, if question is asked like what is your name, you cannot just say like my name is Mark, that, like you cannot just say like Mark, you have to say the full sentence, my name is Mark, if they ask you where are you from, you cannot just simply say uh, from Chennai, no, you have to say I'm coming from Chennai. So like where some basic questions will be asked in the second part also some other basic question like to uh, in the uh, speaking examination you will have like two people sitting inside. One person is called an observer. That observer would, would not even talk, not even a word. That person's job is to observe whatever is going on between you and the interlocutor. The other person who is talking to you or who is going to talk to you would be the interlocutor and he will talk to you whatever the instructions he gives you you just follow that and then there will be two of you you and your friend or maybe your classmate will be sitting there so totally four people will be there in the uh, speaking examination hall okay so interlocutor mean the person who is talking to you is called an interlocutor suppose if i talk to you i am your interlocutor and you are my interlocutor because we are we two are talking okay that's a common word and um, the next you have some uh, again you have a picture here look at this instruction do you like these different places to eat <clears throat> do you like these different places to eat and then you have to start discussing about each scenario and then you have to come to a conclusion as to which part you personally like to eat like whether you like to eat in the outdoor or in a restaurant or in, a, in, a, in a, uh, whatever the place you see here as a family or with friends or, or something like that in a beach side or in a forest whatever is given so you have to frame your answers appropriately and then you have to say it in a particular manner okay so that's what you'll be doing in this particular uh, speaking part